Hello and welcome to another episode of Japan Business Time with Rochelle Kopp and myself, Hiko Simon. Uh, the, 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 the road is getting darker. Uh, as we've been going down through the various <laughs> negative aspects, perhaps, of working in Japan and some of the recent episodes, uh, Glenora is the name, I think, okay, I, I have a cheat sheet. It's Glenora 1974 uh, submitted the, the, the ultimate dark topic. The topic today is the banishment room and death from overwork and the real dark side of working in Japanese businesses. So a uh, lot to talk about. Hang around. <laughs> We're getting into the realm of uh, literally black companies and right, you know, yes. kind of uh, worker abuse, and but but right. even not black companies. Just well, even but no, we have we have to just say what black company is. But not everyone's going to not know racist. That. Not yeah, racist. Yeah, this is not a company run by an African American. I don't discriminate you know, yes, against yes. companies of any creed or background. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's it's, it's well, it's the Japanese term, but it's in Japanese, it's braku kikyo. Yeah. And so the idea of um, black means it's kind of like they've got a black mark against them, or they've yeah. got a black heart, or something like that. It's yeah. just there are companies that are bad yeah. in terms of how they treat their employees. Yeah. Um, any anything like uh, if if someone is like uh, innocent or safe, they say white, yeah. and if someone is guilty of some sort of crime, they say black. Just like an old, you know, spaghetti <laughs> western, you know, the good guys wear the white hats, the bad guys wear the black hats. <laughs> that's they a have, black hat yeah. company. That's a, that's a good way of putting yeah. it, actually. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, and, and, and the nuance being a company that abuses or, or that, that violates the social norms of how respectable companies are supposed to treat employees. Right, basically. and not just social norms, but laws. Yes, well, and laws yeah. as well, you know, right. sometimes. Uh, so, yes, and, and a lot of laws are being brought in specifically to address the problem of, uh, of these companies, right. specifically because sometimes people in these black companies die. And generally, if someone has died in, in these companies, they tend to, and that goes public, that company immediately gets tarred with the uh, with the brush. Yeah. That is a black company right. that that makes its employees work to death. Right. Um, there, I think there was a perception in the the bubble period that um, oh Japan is a country where everyone works so hard that just like you know Eskimos have ninety words for snow, Japanese have a word for death from overwork right, right. because it happens in every country because we all work so hard. It was almost kind of seen people almost boasted that they had a word about it because mm. they they, they work mm-hmm. so hard, but. There's definitely no positive connotation at all left, no. if there ever was one, from the no. idea of karoshi, of work. No, no, there isn't. Um, and it's become, it's really, really, it's a really anti-social mark against, against right, right, any right, company yeah. when, that when has that. When it comes out that someone, you know, there's a, there's a um, governmental body that parses claims from people who say, my family member died and they died because they worked too much. Yeah. And if that body rules, that indeed the person died because of overwork. Yeah. You know that company. It's it. It looks really bad yeah. from a publicity standpoint. So let's talk about it. The 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 in terms of the the banishment room and the kind of the the cultural you could say hating or sort of you know kind of um, right. uh, shunning sort of processes okay. that happen. Well, that's a whole different thing, right? Maybe so we've a got. Thing. You know, so but 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 they're related, I think. So um, well, first let's explain what a banishment room is. And so that's oidashi beya in Japanese. Yeah. And so. In Japan, it's very difficult for companies to fire people. So what they do is instead of firing people, they make it so miserable that you want to quit. Mm. And one way that they do this is put people in these so-called banishment rooms and they have nothing to do. And they just sit there, you know, they read the magazines or something like that all day and go stir crazy. And I reacted to learning about this the same way I know you're reacting right now saying that sounds like the best thing ever that you don't even have to work and you just read. And and, and, on, and I've seen people in that situation. I've been in companies with mm-hmm. people in that kind of situation. And I've seen people who appear to be very much enjoying the situation of not actually doing very much work and, and accepting right. their, their kind of role. But for a lot of people, and depending on how aggressively companies undertake that strategy, mm-hmm. they can be pretty nasty about it but, sometimes. But, well, a lot of times these rooms are in the basement with no windows. And a lot of it is, is um, <laughs> making people lose face. Yeah. Yes. So And, and that's right. So there is a, there is a, there is a, a, an element of overcoming the, uh, the the social the stigma of being in that situation yeah, right exactly but if you're you know particularly if you are like over 50 years old and so it's very hard to find a new job and you mm-hmm. think well if I just stick it out for 10 more years and collect my pension or whatever you know a lot of people do still tough it up through that and they tend to be uh, again in any big Japanese corporation a number of people in these kind of empty sort of roles that right. they're just sort of sitting there without they literally right, right. aren't doing that much it used to be called the Mado Giwazoku the people who sat by the window yes yes 
And but now there's just more of those people. Yeah. I mean, if you ask me, really, actually, these two topics are linked. I mean, they're not just they they're not just ways the Japanese people people get treated badly by their companies. Yeah. But I think they're both caused by the fact that the Japanese labor market is really basically kind of messed up. Well, it's basically, it, 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 what you say, it, it's very, it's not very fluid. It, it's not fluid. It, it's, it's, it's the not opposite fluid. of fluid, not right. in English, but yes. Yeah, yes. Um, so it's, it's um, rigid. Yes. Yes. And because of that, you know, for example, these black kigyo. Yeah. You know, in the United States or any place else with a, with a fluid labor market, nobody would ever work for they those firms out, yeah. again. Right? Well, the fact is that the, the highest rate of death from overwork uh, occurs in Japan in food and restaurants. Yeah, restaurant industry is very could big you, issue. Could you imagine in America anyone working themselves to death in a, in a, in a restaurant, restaurant job? Restaurant job, could yeah, exactly. That? It doesn't make any sense. But yet in Japan, uh, and, and, and the very famous names which come up, I mean... The, Watami the big, is the big one. It's the big really one. bad. I won't go into Watami oh, we shouldn't because go into of that. It. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, but these come up, and it's not just that one, but it's all these sort of things where, again, the staff are just worked in the, in the most Crazy terrible hours. conditions. Yeah, terrible, Crazy terrible. hours. Crazy and, hours, and with huge gaps. Like between lunch and dinner, they're not paid, but they're made to like clean the, clean the restaurant for four hours unpaid, and then come back. So they only register working for 12 hours, but they actually work for 20 hours. And, and, and they die. <laughs> so you're getting crappy pay, and, and they, they put up with it, and they do it until they die. And because people have fear of not being able to get another job is what it is. Which is, I mean, I, I am actually still in the Western mindset for this. I, I don't understand why people don't get up and walk out, but they I don't. I don't either. They don't. They don't. I mean, I think it's, it, it's fear, and it's I can't be abandoning the team, and I yeah. said I was going to do this, and so it's honor, and it's all those things. But... I think basically it's mainly a lack of a fluid labor market, and so mm. people have fear. And people and don't realize the freedom that they actually have as well. That right, right. This is there's another thing around this. When I have switch changed jobs, when I've decided, you know, okay, look for a new job after a few years, and go and get that other job, and get the thing, I go back and I give my notice. And again, giving notice in a Western company, hey, here's, here's my one month's notice. Um, you know, got a new place. I'll take my right. vacation, cash in my vacation. See you guys later. And everyone knows, oh, he's cashing his thing. What an inconvenience. Okay, well, we have no choice. Well get out today yeah goodbye <laughs> or, or, or whatever but it's fairly straightforward the interaction in a lot of Japanese companies and this has been a big problem in a lot of industries like consulting uh, IT consulting has been a big one because a, there is actually relative fluidity a lot of uh, IT consultants go out on their own or join a friend's company or something um, Japanese companies sometimes they refuse to allow their employees to quit and the fact is that legally they can't block it they, oh right but right the employees don't know that and, and, Interesting. and companies there, there, there is this phenomenon of um employees trying to quit and being prohibited by the company and not knowing, not getting legal advice or not being aware of the label law enough to know that they, that they can be blocked. Uh, and it's, it's based around this perception as well, that, that quitting a company is a very rare and difficult thing and somehow it requires the consent of the boss. And I've, I've, when I've given notice in two Japanese companies, I remember in both cases, I was told by my boss in one of them, I said, this is my notice. He said, well, um, I can't give consent to that. I was going, well, that's not really relevant. <laughs> but we actually had this thing. He actually believed that he had he the authority stop to you. stop it. Interesting. And uh, it, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a, a Seinfeld with George Costanza, you know, where he said he quit and then he showed up at work the next day <laughs> pretending that he had declared he had quit. It was a little bit like that for a few days where my boss had pretended that he had prohibited me. I'd have given my notice. Interesting. But, um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, you're right. The fl it's not just the fluidity, the, the, the rigidity in the laws, but there's also a cultural thing as well that, right. yes, people feel like they can't move and they feel right, very... Right. Yeah, they feel, they'll feel stuck. You know, and I hear all these stories of, you know, I, I heard a story the other day of a Japanese guy who was transferred to work in the United States. Yeah. They wouldn't let his bring his wife, who he had just married the week before. Yeah. And you hear stories like this, and, you know, from an American perspective, like, why doesn't this person just go quit for her, uh, quit, yeah. and go work for someone, you know, that would have a decent working condition for them? Yeah. And, you know, people don't. They put up with it. And so then it enables companies to treat people badly. Yes. Because... And people feel like they can't escape. People feel like they can't escape. And it just leads to just such negativity. So what is it? I mean, for me as well, this is a real mystery. And for me, as I'd like to think... I have, okay, I have worked when I was doing IT, I've worked 72 hours straight, I've worked to a point I had heart palpitations, and yeah. as a young fit person, so I can, I can understand yes. how, and, and you know, this is an industry where young people died in projects mm -hmm. that I knew about. Yeah. So, I, I can kind of, in a way, I've come, I'd say I would never let myself get into that situation, I'll be, I have been close to it in my, in my early days. So I can kind of understand, but at the same time, and I guess I did feel an obligation for that time on that project through that very busy period that I had to stay there and soldier through it. But 
Yeah, I, the idea that some that people feel so trapped that they're in the situation that they that there's no way other than going until they die. Right. It's hard. It is well, still hard for I, me to get. It hard. Well, I think there's this thing in Japanese culture where people feel like they have to give their all. Yeah. And they feel like they have to push themselves. Yeah. So I remember. Um, so, um, a, uh, a friend of mine from the United States yeah. who um, had first had her interaction with Japan on one of these Japan US student conferences. Oh, yeah. And she had come, come here to Japan, and you know, the student teams were working on whatever projects. Mm. And one of the gals on her team disappeared. Yeah. And she's like, Well, where's you know, Suzuki san? And they're like, Oh, Taoreta. And she's like, what? And, you know, Taorita, which means, like, she collapsed. she passed off, she yeah. collapsed or whatever. And she's like, Ugh. she what? And they're like, well, you know, she had been working really, really hard and staying up late. And, like, this is like a student conference. Why, why did she push herself so much? So that was really a huge culture shock thing for this friend of mine. So you come back to the last episode where we were talking about how Mr. Joe Efficiency, who, who smiles and waves goodbye to everyone at 6 o'clock because he's so much more efficient, and right. how everyone perceives him and if they're jealous of him. <laughs> uh, when you have people, when you have, a, when we're you have so a culture, dedicated. When people are so dedicated that they're collapsing, and this person is is apparently slacking off and boastingly it's, slacking off about it's it. Extremely irritating. <laughs> we'll get to the episode about passive aggression. It's coming, <laughs> but that that is what gives rise to this. So you know, yes. this by by no means. By the way, this is not normal. Even by Japanese, um, by Japanese cultural and legal standards, working to death is is absolutely. Not, not, not normal, tolerated. not okay. And where it happens, the, the stigma is extreme against the companies that it happens to. Right, but it's just, it's, but it, still happens. it happens way too often. It still happens. It happens way too often. And when you hear the stories, they're really heartbreaking too. Yeah, and maybe as you say, but maybe the more fluid labor market and people realizing the freedom that they, which they already have actually, the people don't right, realize right. But they don't, but they don't know, people don't realize it. Yeah. People don't realize it. I think they're still, yeah. the minds are stuck in the past era in that yeah. sense. Oh, I think it's changing. There is a big phenomenon of young people who don't even want to get in the lifetime employment jobs anymore. Right. And the, the, the whole, the, is, the labor market, no question, is changing. But right. this is still a very big part of, you know, particularly a big business in Japan. So. Right, exactly. That's a great topic. So, uh, uh, Glenora, 1974. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That was an yeah. awesome topic. And uh, we'll come back with more of your topics uh, next week. Uh, forget the time limits. I don't see who needs time limits. We, we Although we are going to have to adhere to time limits because we, we have, to have a clock running soon. okay but um this is awesome so thank you and come and join us again next week for more of these topics yes. about the business japan business time peace